And for those people who are either about to start or who have started, what's, what advice would you give them? What two or three things would you, would you let them know before they actually started um, that, that journey of entrepreneurship? Well, I will, tell, I will try to share from my own experience, you know, because when you start out in life as a young man, it's easy or easier to make it a switch to say I want to start my business because you have invested little in whatever. But when you stay for a long time in a company and you are doing well and then you feel that oh you are not in your, your passion spot. You may not be in your passion spot but you are in your comfort zone. I mean you find EDs of banks that are going down and they don't want to leave the banks. They want to leave but they are not leaving because of the comfort. At that level, you are so invested in your success that you are a bit worried about leaving that comfort zone. There's a lot to give up. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought then, when I was in my job, nobody asked me to leave. In fact, I was prevailed upon to stay. I was earning good commission. The company was well known. And, uh, but you know, my question is, I was on a roll, but was it the best it could be? You know, I know that you, you sometimes you need to give up to get up. You need to give something that is holding you down in order to. But the, the place where you are is a comfort zone. Where you are going is an unknown. So if you're going to start a business, my question is: Do you have the strength of character to leave your comfort zone and to go into an unknown? First question. The second thing that happened to me was that I was very clear that I will not be a people pleaser. You know, sometimes the decisions we make is made through the prism of what people will say about us. And so we are constrained to make the decision we want to make because we are making a decision that pleases others. People hail you, I hail, you don't have enough money, but you know that people expect that, oh, at your position you buy this car, then you go and buy it. Big Tokuboka Jeep. You could have bought a Toyota Corolla and it would give you four years. But this big Tokuboka from day one is draining you. But that's what people, you feel, people expect. So you have to be able to say, it doesn't matter what people think is about my plan. When I was in my former company, I was invited to almost every cocktail in town. I was very popular. When I started my own company, if I get a letter of demand, it's even a good day. You know, nobody was inviting me for anything. I, I dropped out of my, my range of friends. But this was the fact or the sacrifice. The third thing is you cannot measure your success in terms of immediate results. It's not a 100 meter dash. It's a long distance journey. You know, so I stopped measuring myself, oh, this quarter result is bad. This year result is bad, you know. Um, you just got to keep in there for the long run. But if you start measuring yourself according to short-term measures or how people are measuring you, you may be tempted to quit when there are some challenges. But if you say, well, it's not extremely what I wanted to be this year, but next year will be better. Next year you fall short, you say, listen, guess what? I still have more time. Let me put more time. Could be that just before, just at the time that you stopped, a few days or weeks or months after you'd have hit it big, but you just stopped. You know. So these are the three things I would say to people. Mm -hmm. If you have a need, you want to do something about it. You get people to come with you. You have your way power, your will power, your weight power. You make sure that you leave, you are ready to leave your comfort zone. You make sure that you are not going to be a people pleaser follow your own plan, and then measure yourself by the long term. Because in life, there are ups and downs. But at the end of the day, it's the long term results that determines.